In this lesson, we're going to look at solving quadratic inequalities in one variable and how that applies to word problems. The nice thing about word problems is you, is you can always, at the end, consider the context and see if your answer makes sense. Uh, you'll see what I mean by that in just a little bit. Here's the problem. It says one leg of a right triangle is 7 centimeters shorter than the other leg. How long should the shorter leg be to ensure the hypotenuse is at least 13 centimeters? So it's always good to draw a picture if, if you can. In this particular case, what I'm going to do is represent x as my longer leg and represent x minus 7 as my shorter leg. It's also always good to represent how you're using the variable to represent your unknown. So my longer leg from my picture would be x, shorter leg would be x minus 7, and it says here that my hypotenuse is at least 13 centimeters. So I'm going to label my hypotenuse. What that means is that the hypotenuse has to be greater than or equal to 13 because it has to be that way. So right now what we can do is use something that we know or a relationship we know to set up an inequality. And the relationship we know uh, from the Pythagorean relationship is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this particular case, because we use the word at least, it's going to be an inequality. It didn't say exactly 13 centimeters, it said at least. So the inequality here would be a squared, which is x squared, plus b squared, which is x minus 7 squared, is greater than or equal to 13 squared. Uh, if you had the inequality so sign incorrect, the nice thing is that later on we can think about the context. All right, so what we're going to do is start solving, because we know where the boundary is in this particular case, okay? You may want to look at previous lessons. Uh, the boundary is going to be where x squared plus x minus 7 squared which is x minus 7 times x minus 7, which is some you don't want to remember, is equal to 169, which is uh, <clears throat> 13 squared. So let's go ahead and solve this. It would be x squared uh, plus x squared minus 14x uh, plus 49 is equal to 169. If I want to put this into standard form, I would subtract 169. And I have 2x squared minus 14x <clears throat> minus 120 is equal to 0. A few ways you could solve this to find out where the boundary points exist, uh, and our boundary points are going to be solid. Uh, one would be to use the quadratic formula. Secondly, probably the easier route if you're good at factoring would be the way to do that. Uh, your GCF or your greatest common factor is 2, so I can make it x squared minus 7x minus 60 is equal to 0. And I want to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 60 and differ by 7. So in this particular case, what that's going to be is, and let me just think about my factor pairs, I think 12 and 5. So that's going to be uh, x minus 12 and x plus 5. Okay, so our two boundary points are going to be x is equal to 12 and x is equal to negative 5. So we know that the values of x that set up the boundaries of this inequality would be 12, or a length of 12 for x, and it's included, and a length of negative 5 for x. So if we go ahead and test these uh, regions, because this is what we've done in order to solve this, what you may want to do is ask yourself about the context. Is it necessary to necessarily check negative 6 or any number in this interval? Uh, no number in this interval could be a solution for x because you can't have a negative length. So we already know that this interval, just plain old, doesn't work. Uh, this next one, is it possible to have some numbers in this interval? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so you might want to test a number in this interval. Uh, a number in this interval that would work would be a number like 8. Because the length could be 8, and 8 minus 7 is 1. So let's just see if that works. So if I substitute this in, or we could even just ask ourselves if it works, uh, to be quite honest with you, but I'll substitute it in. You'll ask yourself, is 8 squared plus 8 minus 7 squared greater than or equal to 169? So it's 64 plus 1 greater than or equal to 169? No, that won't work. Uh, so finally, let's test the number 13, for example, and ask yourself, is 13 squared plus 13 minus 7 squared greater than or equal to 13 squared. Well, absolutely it will be. It'll be 169 plus 36 greater than or equal to 169. Yes, so this is our solution here. Okay, we haven't answered the context of the question. So the question says, how long should the shorter leg be to ensure the hypotenuse is at least 13 centimeters? This, these are the values of x. So the longer leg should be 12 or longer in order to ensure that the hypotenuse is greater than or equal to 13. So the shorter leg should be, 
so let me put this into context, longer has to be x is greater than or equal to 12, okay? But the shorter would be that x minus 7 has to be greater than, sorry, it's not true. Uh, the shorter leg would have to be that 12 minus 7. So in this particular case, 12 minus 7 is going to be 5. So the shorter leg has to be greater than or equal to 5. Ask yourself if that makes sense. You could just give yourself an example. So if this was, uh, for example, a length of 6, <clears throat> just choose a number that's bigger than or equal to 5. Uh, the longer leg would be 6 plus 7, so it would be 13. So ask yourself, if that was the case, would the hypotenuse be at least 13 centimeters? Absolutely, if the two legs were 6 and 13. Uh, so that is definitely the solution. So the solution to this question, uh, if I want to put it into words, which you could do, uh, shorter leg must be 5 centimeters or longer.